As always, if you haven't done so yet, just make sure that you pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. We can treat this spherical drop of water as a spherical conducting shell. And we know from this chapter that the electric potential at the surface of a spherical conducting shell is given by the following equation. Now in this equation, of course, V is our electric potential. K is a constant whose value we will illustrate shortly. And then Q is going to be the overall charge. And we want to make sure that we put that charge into coulombs. And as we can see in the problem, it's given in picocoulombs. So we'll have to convert the picocoulombs into the standard unit of coulombs. And then finally, R, of course, is going to be the radius of the shell. And so it might be helpful first to rearrange the equation and solve it for radius, since that's what part A of this question is asking. And so in order to isolate the radius, we can first multiply both sides of the equation by R. Maybe squeeze that in right there. The R's on the right-hand side, of course, will cancel. So then we have VR equals KQ. And then to finish isolating R, we can divide both sides of the equation by V so that the V's cancel on the left-hand side. This gives us the radius of this spherical drop of water as equaling K times Q divided by V. So now it's just a matter of plugging in the known values. So we mentioned K was a constant, and that has a value of 8.99 times 10 to the power of 9. And the unit is a Newton meter squared per coulomb squared. So that's usually listed in a reference tables in the textbook or perhaps on uh, your actual test or quiz. And then Q is going to be the charge. Now, as noted, we got to convert the picocoulombs into coulombs. And it turns out that a picocoulomb is equivalent to 10 to the negative 12 coulombs. That's a value you certainly want to memorize. So the 32 picocoulombs would simply be 32 times 10 to the negative 12 coulombs. And then we'll divide this by the electric potential, and that is given as 490 volts. So let's pick up our calculators and type this all in. And when we do that, we can see that the radius of this spherical drop of water is roughly 5.87 times 10 to the negative 4. And that unit will be in meters, the standard unit of length. So that completes part A. And in part B, we're going to take two of these spherical drops of water and combine them and then determine the new potential at the surface of that combined drop. And the key to solving part B is to understand that when we combine two identical spherical drops of water, they're going to create one slightly larger spherical drop. And it's going to be necessary to calculate the radius of that new spherical drop of water as well as the total amount of charge on it. And then once we have those two values, we can simply go back to the equation for the electric potential at the surface, which again was K times Q divided by R. So as long as we can figure out the new value of Q and the new value of R, we'll be in good shape to calculate the electric potential. Now, the new value of Q should be relatively straightforward because if we take one drop of water whose charge is Q and then another drop of water whose charge is Q and combine them or add them together, then the new charge of the sphere is going to simply be the sum of those. So in other words, the new charge, which we might call Q prime, will equal 2 times Q. And that's simply an additive effect of combining those two drops of water. In a similar manner, what will happen when we combine the two drops is that the volumes will be additive. So the, the volume of this drop plus the volume of this drop is going to equal twice the volume of the new drop. But in order to get that into terms of radius, we're going to have to know the formula for the volume of a sphere. And it turns out that the volume of a sphere is equivalent to 4 thirds times pi times the radius of the sphere cubed. So we take the volume of that first drop and we add it to the volume of the second drop. And that's going to equal 
the new volume of the larger drop. So that's going to be 4 thirds pi. Now let's be careful here. We don't want to just say radius cubed because the radius of this new drop is going to be larger. So we might want to call this r prime. And then don't forget to cube that just based on the formula for the volume of a sphere. Now the 4 thirds pi, because it appears in all three terms, will actually divide out, which is shorthand for just canceling. So in essence, we have r cubed plus r cubed equals r prime cubed. It is our goal to find r prime, so we can add the r cubes on the left-hand side to make 2 r cubed equals r prime cubed. And then to finish solving for r prime, we would actually have to cube root both sides. So it gets a little wonky here, but we'll take the cube root on both sides. And what that does is the cube root and the cube will actually cancel out. That gives us r prime, which will be the cube root of 2r cubed, a bit of a messy quantity. Turns out you can slightly clean that up if you split the radical into two radicals. In other words, if you have the cube root of 2 times the cube root of r cubed, what happens is over here again, the cube root and the cube cancel. So you're finally left with the cube root of 2 times just r. And that's going to give you the new radius of that larger spherical, spherical drop. Recalling also that the new charge was simply 2q, we are ready to calculate the potential at the surface. We go back to our formula for calculating the potential at the surface of a spherical shell. And we're going to plug in our known values. So this time, the q is actually the q prime and the r is the r prime because it's the new drop. So we'll put in 2q right here and then the cube root of 2 times the radius down there. And then we're going to use the same values for q and r that were given in the setup of the problem. So we go back up, and we had the q of 32 picocoulombs, and the r we actually found in part a. And that I have erased, but that had a value of 5.8. 8 to 7 times 10 to the minus 4. I'm going to go ahead and write that down so I don't forget it. And that again was uh, found in part A. So now it's time to plug in the known values. Let's remember that K was the 8.99 times 10 to the 9th Newton meters squared per coulomb squared times 2 times the Q value, which was 32 picocoulombs. Don't forget to do 32 times 10 to the negative 12 to get it into coulombs. Divide this by the cube root of 2 times the radius, which was that 5.87 times 10 to the negative 4 meters. And now you will carefully punch this into your calculator, and you should get approximately 778 and then the standard unit of electric potential is volts. So this will be the answer to part B.